Hi everyone, welcome and welcome back to Student Shares. And today we are going to talk about how to apply to masters in computer science in the United States. Before we get started, a little background about myself. I'm studying computer science at University of Pennsylvania. After undergrad, you'd best believe that you'd never have to write personal essays ever in your life. But if you are at a crossroad where I was a few years ago, where you are staring at these applications and having to come up with personal essays and making applications to these schools, here are some of the things that you need to know. So everything starts with doing your research and shortlisting which schools that you would like to apply to. I made more detailed video on how to choose the best school for you, what are some of the considerations you might want to make. So I will link that video right here. So please go check that video out and then we can come back to this video. So great, now you have shortlisted schools that you want to apply to, whether it's one or 10 schools. Although I'll recommend that you apply more than a couple more schools than just one then the next step is called plan 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 i use notion um, you can use any type of productivity tool to keep track of the things that you need to prepare for that for the schools that you're applying to or what are the deadlines oh, there might be some early deadlines and secondary deadlines and each school has different deadlines so make sure you take notes of those on your notion or on your google calendar also do research on how much do you need to pay for application what do they require you to submit and so on um, typically some of the things that you need to prepare for to apply for masters in computer science in the united states are statement of purpose or any other custom field question that a school asks uh, recommendation letters different school asks different number of recommendation letters typically two or three uh, from your professors or former employ employers you would need to send your trans tra transcript so your gpa gre yes a lot of the schools do require you to take yet another standardized test so i will get back to that later in this video if you're an international student or are not from strictly english speaking countries uh, they will require you to take toefl perhaps portfolios uh, as well as application fee so these are some of the things that you need to prepare in advance so um, literally like create a table of all of these above items and write down rows of schools that you want to apply to and start check marking whatever that you're ready and what you're uh, still in need this will really help you to track and visualize how far um, you have prepared for um, as well as to prioritize what you need to start doing so once you have written down all the things that you need to start preparing start, start study for GRE and also find a date to take an exam because without a deadline on which day you're going to um, take an exam, write an exam. I noticed that people tend to really deprioritize studying GRE over busy academic schedules. So I highly, highly recommend that you set a date and then just once you time box how much, how many weeks that you have got, you'll find yourself more motivated, motivated to study. Uh, so there's two sections for GRE. One is verbal section and quant se section. For CS, my experience was that you just need to do very well on this quant section. So I got 170 out of 170, a full mark for quant section. So I was quite confident that my math or logic logical skills are proven but then my verbal score was not good it was i think just around average i believe or just above or just around average definitely not a stellar score that i would think that i could apply to some of the most competitive schools but i was like hey i'm applying for cs master's program and my quant uh, scores are good so then i just literally took a chance and i for as far as my experience goes um i got into some of the um most competitive schools so i would say um do well on quant um if you have limited time like just study a lot for quant section um another thing that i would highlight is that if you can um try to take gre earlier than your immediate deadline for application so then if you mess up 
your first trial, you have enough time to uh, take second GRE. And then not only taking, you would also have to wait for the results to come out and also for them to send the uh, official score to school. It takes weeks. So then let's say your deadline is 1st of November and there's a GRE that you could take on um, like 20th of October, you might think that you have taken the exam so you have enough time uh, for application but in reality that's not the case because it will take some time for your results to come out and for them to send uh, the results to school. So then leave enough time, um, at least a month I'll say, before your first deadline. Um, for my case, I took twice because my first GRE exam didn't go very well. One thing to keep in mind is that that and what I have underestimated was that the exam is like freaking three or four hours long and I think I lost stamina in the middle of the exam. I got like so tired that I couldn't really like stare into monitor for that long with a lot of focus. Um, so then I think whatever the second half was, I did really poorly. So then next time when I am taking GRE, at least I knew what I was getting myself into. So then I think it has become easier for me to manage my stamina, I will say. So yeah, try a mock exam just like how you would in real exam setting because I think I've just taught it without a time pressure. So that's one thing that I would recommend you guys doing. Fourth is writing a um, personal essay or statement of purpose essays. Uh, I'll say do this alongside GRE uh, if you are not a quick writer because at least for me, it takes a lot of time for me to come up with this statement of purpose related essays and you would want to take feedback from your professors, friends, uh, and then um, it will obviously take time for you to do some research. So do, do not leave it until the last minute. That's what I want to say. Um, so the essay wasn't as vague or broad in comparison to applying for undergrad because I remember putting a lot of effort and thought into like undergrad college application to liberal arts school because um, I didn't have a specific major or like career purpose or career goal in mind then so then my essay would have to be a lot more uh, personality based and like yeah so it was harder for me to find a focus and really try to uh, show me as a person and why I am a good fit for the school. However, the masters are a lot more specialized and you must be applying to masters to achieve specific goals and mission, right? Like for undergrad, I feel like a lot of people just apply because we grow, grow up in this society where like we need an undergrad degree. But then for masters, I feel like because of the cost uh, and also just the time commitment, um, people tend to apply because they're genuinely interested in the things that they're going to learn or um, at least they have very specific outcome what they're looking for. So I think then writing an essay becomes easier because um, you have a strong purpose and mission that you can talk about. However, this doesn't mean that you have a shortcut to writing essay uh, or skip doing research on school, labs that you might be interested in, courses that you want to take, what specific effort that you have put in thus far that makes you a good candidate and so on. So um, it will take time for you to do such research. Some tips that I would give is to like research uh, on a lot of the, for me because it is like computer science program, but I can imagine how it can translate to other uh, majors as well, like reach out to the research labs, professors, postdocs, or like to the interest group or other related things that you can join. Get an idea from there on what are the, some of the very specific things that this school makes a great option for you and how you can be an addition to the community and for their research community. Um, I think those are some of the most direct way to show among many other schools why this school is particularly for you. Yeah, so that's perhaps one of the most well-known tips, but still I would like to emphasize. 
I guess number five, what you need to prepare is getting recommendation letters. I feel like for all these bullet points, I'm saying start early, start early. But then I guess it is really important because I really think that I thought I had started my preparation earlier but yet i just felt like uh, i did not have enough time to do all this one specifically takes longer than you might think initially so start asking early uh, let your potential professors know that you think that they might be able to give you a strong letters of recommendation for xyz schools and ask them if they feel comfortable uh, or feel like they know you well enough to give you or write you a good re recommendation letter. I think a lot of the students make mistakes here where they would just reach out to one of the most famous professors uh, in the field or just current professor who you're taking classes just because you have an easy access to them. Those are valid approaches, but I do feel like there's two different things. A very strong professor who's well known in the industry may not be the best person to write you a very strong recommendation letter. So I do think it's really important for you to like really reflect on your college classes and your relationship with professors and identify who might, who you think would be a great person to really advocate for you but then also make sure to ask them if they're willing to do that if they feel comfortable doing so because i think writing a recommendation letter will be a quite a long journey but it doesn't end them just writing one paper and call it a day uh, for each school that you apply to they will need to submit the application letter to the school portal so there will be a lot of emails back and forth so try to find reliable professor also um, because you want to make sure that they submit those recommendation letters on time another thing that i would highlight is that if the school's asking you to get recommendation letters from three professors reach out to four professors um, this is something that i learned through my experience where i have had three professors who initially were willing to give me recommendation letters but life happens and honestly like things can happen to professor as well so during the process of application one of the professor uh, was on sabbatical and he was no longer in touch so then this brings back to this point of like yeah it's rather a long journey and you will need their support um throughout this journey so so yeah make sure you um ask around more professors than what is required just in case something like what happened to me happens to you it is just unfortunate things can happen to professors as well right so that uh, although they have the best intention to support you um if they're not in a good position to help you they won't be able to help you on time so um, yeah, it's at your advantage to really up manage um, these tasks and be conservative, I'll say, and like do more than what you think is necessary. Yeah, just um, to highlight, um, again, th this process is the part where you'd really need to up manage um, your professors because you're the one who needs that recommendations to come through the most and then they're busy with other works as well so make sure you track for each applications when is the deadline for recommendation letters to have come through and really just like how your professors are giving you an assignment in reverse this time it's your turn to give them an assignment hey i need your application recommendation letter to be submitted by this date i'll remind you a few days later if i don't see uh, yeah if i don't see that it has been submitted things like that it you will do them a favor like it i struggled a little bit with this because i have built this rapport with my professors on where they are giving me tasks not me giving them tasks but that's i think absolutely necessary for you to step up and do that in um for your own benefit I, don't, I lost track of numbers, but I think it's number six uh, is to prepare and take TOEFL. I really put this until aside until the last minute because I was like, hey, I don't need to take TOEFL exam. Like this is literally 
English is the only language that I have gotten any higher education from and I graduated from American college and then I just thought that I would never have to take TOEFL but then when I did further research, it uh, seems like unless you are from UK, US, Australia or a few other English speaking country, they are asking you to submit TOEFL. Some of the schools do, not all of the schools, but at least some of the schools that I was gonna apply to did require. So I remember like trying to find a place to take TOEFL last minute. Don't be like me uh, because it will be a bit stressful trying to book a TOEFL exam and uh, make sure they send your results on time so do some research and identify whether you have to take it or not and if you have to take it just go and take it literally i think toefl exam if you are applying for masters in the us and if you can watch my video and follow along i think you're good um i didn't study at all i just went and took an exam i don't think you have to like get a stellar result for TOEFL so just go take an exam just so that you have the requirements met and seven you another thing that you may not think proactively but that happens is that you need to pay to apply to this school so application fee is something that you you'd also need to prepare for each school I remember paying around 100 US dollar it depends uh, but I think it was around hundred dollars per school so if you're applying for 10 different schools that's thousand US dollars and it does add up and as a student that might be a significant amount of money so be prepared for that there are some ways to get this application fee waived so it might be also worthwhile taking some time to look into ways in which you could have this application fees waived but just to know that it was around 100 US dollars per school yeah and also um, taking GRE, taking TOEFL and having those scores officially submitted to each school that you're applying to also costs money so um, it all adds up and yeah so I just wanted to say it up front so that it's less of a surprise for you guys as you are preparing to apply for masters uh, yeah, so these are some of the things that you will need to apply to master's program in CS and it is a lot. I remember doing this alongside full-time recruitment as well as just being a full-time student trying to finish my thesis and trying to pass algorithm exams and things like that. So I know by first hand how uh, busy your life can be in your senior year and and that's why I hope um, at least me walking through some of the things that you would need to prepare um, are helpful. And um, one thing that I would also like to share is that it, it wasn't really a strategic way to plan this way, but it turned out well, was that I have really focused earlier on in the semester on applying for masters. So then because most of my applications would have done by November. So I just spent most of my efforts in just getting the academics done and applying for masters. And then once uh, I have finished applying, uh, I geared myself up for full-time recruitment. So then there was at least, at least a division of focus instead of me just like trying to apply for everywhere from masters to companies and I think that would have been really stressful so um, maybe plan out maybe depending on your program um, if your applications can be done earlier just really focus on getting those applications done and you would have enough time for also recruit full time yeah pre-plan and plan and plan and plan early and start early is one thing that i would really emphasize yeah i really wish that Somebody sat me down and told me these are all of the things that you need to prepare in order for you to get into master's program. So uh, I hope you guys find this information super helpful and I hope you guys get a result that you guys had wished. And let me know in the comment what are your, some of your dream schools and programs you want to um, get into or you're planning to apply to. And thank you so much for watching these videos and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye!